loving review of the Tokyo Marie SR16. I recently got this off uh, Airsoft Forum for about 210 bucks only, and regularly this would be about 350 bucks if you get it off Airsoft GI or Red Wolf. Now, just a few perspectives or overall things on the gun. It is made by Tokyo Marie, so the body is plastic and front parts are mostly metal, and that's how it is with most Tokyo Marie guns. I have high respect for the company because I also own a Tokyo Marie De Desert Eagle, and it is also very nice. Now the gun only weighs about seven pounds, I'd say, so it's not too heavy. You won't be bogged down. You won't be tired running with it. It's not as heavy as the full metal guns, so that is one good thing. As uh, the gun shoots about 280 to 300 FPS with .2s. Now the reason the FPS isn't that high is because it's by Tokyo Marie, and their accuracy is so nice that you will not need a high FPS like 370 or so. I've had guns that shoot 370 and they still aren't as accurate, accurate as this gun in some places. The range of the gun is about 100 feet I'd say and the barrel length is 364 millimeters I believe. Now I'm going to do the review from the back to the front. Now, starting off in the back we have a full plastic stock and instead of the retractable stock on the normal m 4 because this gun is basically an M4 with a metal wrist and except with the retractable stock as a large stock. The reason I like the large stock is because it holds the large type batteries which last a lot longer and can be more powerful and upgradable. The cool thing about this one is that in this battery compartment there's a small compartment on the bottom where the wiring is so you just connect that put the wiring in and it won't get in the way of the battery going in the battery slot and that helps me out a lot whenever I'm trying to get the battery in. It also has a swing adapter which is a metal right here now up here, instead of the flip-up sights it came with, I put on an ACOG because sometimes I use the gun for field, sometimes for CQB. In the field, I usually use a 4x32 ACOG as I have here, and for CQB, I have my EOTech over here. Now the body is made completely plastic, and inside is a version 2 gearbox. On the front, we have Knight's Armament markings, which actually says Stoner Rifle and a caliber and the model number. And here we have a metal selector switch and a metal trigger. On the other side, you have the bolt, which is fully functional to reveal the hop-up. You also have the markings right under it, which shows where, where it's made. Now up here, we have the metal wrist, which is very nice for accessories. You want to put on rail covers, speed keys, flashlights, and lasers. Right now, three rail covers that came with it and a Magpul AFG on here. And one thing I want to let you know if you buy this gun, do not put too many things on the front because the front is mostly metal as compared to the back which is plastic and then add about a large battery. So if you put too much on the front it will be front end heavy and your gun will not be so easy to carry. So I recommend just putting very light things on here, maybe a PEQ and then a foregrip and that's about it. Now up here the front side is also metal with along with the barrel and right here I have a Soundhog, which is a skull frog one by Noveski. And that pretty much is all the gun basically. The rate of fire I'd say was about 850 rounds per minute. And here I'm going to show you the magazines I have, which fit pretty snug. The magazine right here is a E-Mag by Magpul. And it fits very snug. I actually had to put it in a few times before it was completely snug. And it holds about 75 rounds. I believe the mid cap the gun usually comes with is either 68 rounds and then the high cap is 300 rounds. You see it's very snug. Right here is the normal Echo One or D-Boys high cap which holds 300 rounds. You can hear the clicking sound which means it's very tight, it's not, doesn't wobble as much. And in addition to wobble, I can say that the gun on most M16s you'll see wobble in the barrel or the wrist system. On here you won't see that. That's something Tokyo Mari has improved in with most of its guns, and I highly admire that up here. And that is pretty much all the gun to say. It's very durable, it won't break as easy unless you throw it at a wall or something. And it's great for the price, especially if you get it at a cheaper deal. Now I'll give you a close up in a second of how the markings actually look, and if you want to get a close look at the gun. Now here's the gun on close up. As you can see, there is the stock. Up here we have the main body with the metal selector switch. Here you have the Knight's armament markings. And here is my ACOG which I have on right now. And here is the Magpul E-Mag <coughs> which holds 75 rounds. 
And up here we have the metal wrist with the Magpul AFG and three rail covers. And up here with the front side, I had to remove the front sling adapter because I had to get the AFG on and that was blocking the way. And up here we have the sound hog with the skull frog markings, which is a pretty cool thing if you want to get one. Here we'll just check out the other side. It's really all the same thing, but it's still pretty cool to get a look at it. Here you have the Knights MFG Company in Vero Beach, Florida. <clears throat> Here you have the bolt and all kinds of things. Here's a closer look at the bolt if you would like to see it. And there's the hop of unit. And that's pretty much it. Now here we have the P-Mag. And I'm going to do a short shooting test. So you point it that way. At the tree. And it's about only 50 feet. And put it over there. Have the rings on the fence. It's pretty accurate, I have to say. 